Welcome back everybody. Thank you for watching. Today's video has been in the making, uh, at least in my head, for quite a while now and I've actually had a few of my patrons voice their interest in this one. So uh, this video is for you guys. By the way, if you're not a patron and you would like to help support the channel, I will put a link in the description box below. Um, I haven't really promoted my Patreon very much because it's still kind of weird to me to just ask you guys for money, but I have been spending a lot of money on the channel lately and uh, any little bit would help. Plus, YouTube emailed me and pretty much told me that they're not going to monetize my channel. So, if you would like to help support me and help make videos like this possible, uh, you can visit me over there, and I really appreciate it. But today, we are going to be shooting a car door. And like I said, I've had a lot of you guys ask to see one like this, and today, we finally have a car door out here. Behind the car door, we have my 20% clear ballistics gel block, and I just want to see what different bullets do after passing through a car door. Now it's going to be kind of tough to um, get these bullets to go straight into that gel because they're going to be doing all kinds of crazy stuff after passing through this car door. But I did mark it with a key uh, right here and I'll just move the gel block as we shoot uh, different guns and try to get these rounds in that gel block. Now I was hoping that I'd be able to get a ballistic shell torso for this because that would just be perfect. But I got online and looked them up and they're hundreds of dollars. So a clear ballistics, hook it up. I've used your guys' gel blocks for over a year now and I shout you guys out in every video. I'm sure I'm too small of a channel, they probably won't, but um, that would be awesome if we could get a ballistic shell torso and uh, use something like that for these types of videos. But I'm gonna go ahead and set you guys up on the tripod and we will get started. All right, I'm gonna shoot mostly self-defense ammo in this video, uh, at least out of the handguns, because that's obviously what people usually carry. And uh, we usually start with the 22, but I'm gonna go ahead and skip the 22 and go straight to the 380. And we're gonna shoot the 90 grain Federal Premium Hydroshock out of the Sig Sauer P290. I hope this car door don't fall down. I don't really have it too secured, so. Uh, we'll see. All right, there's our entrance hole from the 380. You can see it went uh, just below that X that I carved in there. And there's our exit hole in that car door. And the bullet went in towards the bottom of the gel block. And as you can see, uh, stopped at about two inches into that ballistics gel. Now it actually looks like there was some bounce back in the gel. Uh, you can see that it probably went probably four or five inches into the gel and then the bullet bounced back. So uh, I will take these bullets out when we're done and take a closer look at them. But like I've told you guys before uh, with the 380, there's a lot of different types of ammo out there and um, a lot of people prefer stuff like ball ammo or extreme penetrators and stuff like that because uh, they do get more penetration than these hollow points. All right, next up, the 9mm. And first I'm going to shoot the 135 grain plus P Hornady Critical Duty out of my Glock 17. And uh, I believe that this is the round that the FBI just recently adopted. And from what I've heard, the Critical Duties are kind of made for stuff like this. So let's see how it does. All right, our nine millimeter went in just to the right of our 380. And there's our exit hole there. Went into the gel block towards the middle. I'm really struggling with the glare on this gel block here, so I apologize for that, but there's not much I can do about it. But our nine millimeter critical duty traveled down the gel block and stopped right there, as you can see, uh, quite a bit further than that 380. It looks like it shed something couple inches before the bullet stopped but the nine millimeter critical duty performed pretty well and this one stopped at about nine inches into our ballistic shell block all right I'm gonna do another nine millimeter this is the 115 grain Underwood extreme penetrator as you can see a very unique looking bullet and I did a video on this one a few months ago and it went all the way through two ballistic shell blocks so I'm kind of curious to see how it does in this car door test This is absolutely crazy. So uh, the extreme penetrator went in and had a pretty big wound cavity in that ballistics gel and went all the way through the entire 16-inch uh, gel block. So 
Uh, that's pretty good for the car door test, obviously, but I don't know if you would really want a round that penetrates that much in your concealed carry gun. That's obviously up to you, but to go through this super heavy uh, car door and then all the way through a 20% ballistic shell block like that, uh, that's quite a bit of penetration. So real quick before we move on, unfortunately I don't have a 40 caliber pistol right now. I'm actually being sent one and it's on its way as we speak. So as soon as that gun gets here, I will do a very similar video with uh, different 40 caliber ammo. And I know some of you guys do carry the 40 and actually a lot of police officers carry the 40 because it's supposed to be uh, really good at stuff like this. So as soon as that gun gets here, I will do a video with the 40 and make it up to all of you guys who want to see that. All right, let's do the 45 ACP. This is the 220 grain plus P Hornady Critical Duty out of the 1911. And I'm using a full size 45 because I used a full size 9 millimeter. So let's see how it does. So I think I might have flinched a little bit with the 45, but it still made it into the gel block. So. There's our 45 critical duty right there below our two nine millimeters and our big old exit hole right there. And the 45 critical duty went into the very bottom of the gel block, which like I said, is probably my fault. Uh, traveled along the bottom of that gel block and stopped right there. And this bullet stayed completely intact, which is pretty impressive. Uh, looks like it did expand a little bit. It's kind of turned backwards but it looks like it went about the same distance as our nine millimeter critical duty. And the 45 ACP critical duty stopped at about nine and a half inches into our ballistic shell block. All right, now let's try the 45 230 grain Federal Premium HST. So this is pretty interesting. Our HST went in right there, just to the right of the others. And there's our exit hole right there. It went into the gel block right there towards the middle and went all the way through our ballistics gel block and bounced off the table right there. Now, I've spent the last 20 minutes looking for that bullet and I can't find it but it looks like the HST might have gotten clogged up uh, going through that car door because that bullet usually expands really well and uh, stops about halfway through that ballistic gel block. So it looks like our HST may have clogged up and not expanded in the gel block, which is not a big deal. When you're doing stuff like shooting car doors or uh, you know, if you're in a, a gunfight or something in, in and out of cars, it's not really the biggest deal in the world if the ammo doesn't expand because the main thing is going to be getting enough penetration on the other side of that car door to be effective. All right, let's shoot some rifles. First, we're going to shoot the 55 grain 223 out of my AR-15. And this is actually my third attempt at this one because I recently painted this rifle and forgot to re-zero the optics. So I should have it close enough now. Let's see if I can get this in that gel block. So this is incredibly strange and I hope that the slow-mo uh, will tell us the whole story on this, but our 223 went in right there next to our HST 45. And there's our exit hole there. You can see much smaller than our pistol rounds. And right here in front of our gel block is our 45 critical duty that was nine inches into the gel. So uh, it looks like our 223 went in right there. And this one here is one of the first ones that I shot that uh, bounced off the sandbag here. So uh, don't pay attention to that. But our 223 went in and a couple inches in just had a massive wound cavity in there. I really hope you guys can see that. Um, definitely super impressive and the bullet dipped down hit the table right there right next to where that critical duty was at and bounced up and left the gel block so i assume what happened is the energy from that 223 uh, hitting the table must have just sent that bullet back out the same way that it came in so uh, i really hope that the slow-mo will tell us the whole story on that i'm sure you guys have already seen it but I'm really curious to see uh, how that happened.
All right, next I'm gonna do a 5.56. Five, this is the 55 grain Fort Scott Munitions Brush Hog, and I did a whole video on this one a few weeks ago, and it is a super nasty little uh, rifle round, so let's see how it does in the car door. Our Fort Scott brush hog went in right above our 223. Also had a massive wound cavity in that ballistic shell. This round is designed to tumble. Um, I assume most of these bullets are probably tumbling after exiting that car door, but the brush hog wound cavity did stay uh, fairly big, probably two thirds of the way down the gel block, and it curved upward and left our ballistics gel block. All right, let's try the 545 by 39 out of my AK-74. So that 545 round that I shot was a Tula uh, full metal jacket. And I've actually had a couple of viewers tell me that those keyhole in their AK-74s, and I've never seen that until now. It does look like that 545 definitely keyhole a little bit. You can see right there how it's more of an oval shape than our 223 rounds, which would mean that it probably did keyhole. Now, the exit hole, you can see that it definitely was either keyholing or uh, just tumbling already, which I kind of doubt. But I went ahead and flipped this gel block over because uh, it's a lot easier to see from this angle. And our 545 just made a super nasty wound cavity. It looks like that bullet definitely broke apart. Uh, quite a bit more than our other rifle rounds. Went about halfway down the gel block and stopped right there. And you can see that it's just all deformed. And like I said, you can see shrapnel throughout the gel block where it looks like uh, that bullet broke apart. Now, I like the Wolf uh, 545, but unfortunately I don't have any of those out there. But they do seem to perform quite a bit better than the Tula rounds. Tula is in most people's opinion, kind of the cheapest ammo you can get. Uh, but that is all I have out here for the 545. All right, so I'm starting to run out of room in this gel block. I do have another one out here, but it's super old and you can't really see through it as well as you can with this one. So I went ahead and flipped this one over again and I'm gonna try and aim a little higher. Next, we're gonna do the 762 by 39 out of my AK-47. All right, our 762 by 39 went in right there above all the others. And the exit hole is pretty standard, not much different. Now in the ballistics gel is a different story. That uh, wound cavity from the 762 by 39 is right along the top of the gel block there. And I really hope you guys can see uh, just how big and impressive that is because it is huge all the way down the gel block. Now, this one actually stopped in our ballistics gel and you can see it right there. It is turned backwards, but it stayed intact and did not leave our ballistics gel. So that's kind of interesting that the AR-15s uh, did leave the gel block and the AK-47 didn't because usually in bare gel, it would be the other way around. The AR-15 rounds usually stay in gel and uh, the AK-47 would just zip right through, so kind of interesting. All right, guys, before we go, I'm going to do a couple 12-gauge shotgun loads. First, I'm going to do some double-lot buckshot out of my Benelli Supernova. So before you guys make fun of me in the comments, I have a perfectly good reason for why that recoil uh, pushed me over like that. So right where I'm shooting is just an absolute muddy mess. And instead of kneeling down on one knee and really bracing for the recoil like I should, I'm kind of just squatting down on both feet and I have no stability whatsoever. So I know that every time I shoot a 12 gauge shotgun like that, it's probably going to uh, push me over, but I swear I'm not a wussy. So. Our 12 gauge buckshot 
went in right there and just made a golf ball sized hole in the front of that car door and obviously much bigger than all the others that we've shot today and same thing on the exit hole just absolutely enormous and kind of made a mess over here i'm not really sure uh, what's what it looks like we got some lead and we got a wad here uh yeah just kind of made a giant mess and tore this table up pretty good in the process but you can see that in that gel block we got most of the pellets probably in the first couple inches it looks like a big piece of the wad even went into the gel block as well some of the pellets did go down quite a bit further some of them all the way down to the very end of the gel actually and uh, just absolutely devastating like 12 gauge buckshot usually is all right guys the final round i'm going to shoot today is a 12 gauge one ounce hollow point slug and these kick even harder than the buckshot so let's see how it does <laughs> our 12 gauge slug went in right there next to our buckshot and it's actually a little bit smaller than the double lot buckshot obviously the buckshot had probably spread out uh, by the time it got to the car door but you can see that the hole from that slug is just a perfect circle in the front of that car door and uh, same thing on the exit hole super big but not quite as big as the exit hole from our double up buckshot and this is super impressive so you can see where our slug went into the gel block and traveled down and stopped right there it actually took the wad and most of the way with it and there is the majority of our slug in that gel block there was a little piece over here somewhere right there i assume that that is a piece of our slug as well but most of it is in that gel block uh, definitely deformed and probably went uh, a little less than halfway into our ballistics gel so 12 gauge shotguns are just absolutely devastating and those are two of the more impressive rounds that i've ever shot in the ballistics gel well, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up, guys. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, this is just the beginning and we will do a bunch more videos with these down the road. As you can see, uh, most of this car door hasn't even been touched yet and I still have a whole other car door over there that we haven't used either. So just let me know in the comments what it is that you guys would like to see and we will get those videos out soon. Like I said, I'm definitely gonna do uh, some 40 caliber stuff because I know I have a lot of you guys who have been asking to see that. Um, and I was thinking maybe like a self-defense ammo video and maybe test all the nine millimeter ammo that I have back at the house and uh, see how they perform. But I'm gonna go home, clean this gel block out, which is always a lot of fun. And then we'll come back out soon and pick up where we left off. But if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up for me, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.